Hey guys. I just came in to talk right quick, guys. I just got a few things on my mind and um I want to first start off um by saying um I love you guys. I love all of you. And I just did a video asking you guys for help and I hope everybody watch and participate. I also want to say um I can't speak for nobody else, but I speak for myself when I say that I am here to help in any way that I can. I know my limits. I know my capabilities. But I know what God is concerned. He can do all things. Okay? And I know that with Him being on my side, I can do all things. So trust and believe me. Um... My vision is going to come to pass. Yes, it is in Jesus name. And I'm not here to hurt anybody. I'm not here to throw stones at anybody. I'm just going to speak for myself. I'm not a negative kind of person. I do have my moments where I, you know, be I complain, okay? I have things to say, but I'm not going to say it to the point where I come to you and I hurt you. Okay? I don't want to do that. Whatever my issue might be, Yes, yeah, somebody's going to say something that I don't like. But it's up to me to know who created me and know how he want me to react in situations. It's a what would Jesus do moment for real. Okay. And with that being said, um, I've been doing my daily devotionals and you, uh, you version. And I'm trying to catch up on it with you version. And the one that. I am doing now is called showing hospitality okay and it's Hebrews 13 and I just want to read um, a little bit of it hold on a minute let me get it right and I don't have on my glasses of course my daughter broke my glasses mm-hmm So y'all can go and you can read Hebrews 13. Um, it says, talking to God, thank God for his constant care. Ask him to provide for the needs of those you love. And that's what I'm asking. I'm asking God to provide and however he see fit to use the, his children to do his will. I'm standing on that. And, and it's... um. It also talks about, it says, it's easy to invite our friends and family for dinner. But it's not always easy to welcome people we don't know very well. It can even be harder to share with those who are not, who are different from us. But that awkwardness shouldn't keep us from opening our hearts and our homes to those in need. Luke 14 13 through 14 says, but when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. When we show hospitality to others, whether we know them well or we don't know them at all. We're joining God in caring for people in need and we can be confident that he sees our generosity and is pleased. I thank you, Lord, for that word. Because whether we want to admit it or not, it's a time as this for people that love God and human beings, period. Not knowing from one second to the next, what are we going to go through? Where are we going to be? How are we going to provide for our children? How are we going to provide for ourselves? When you find the opportunity to do something for someone else um, unselfishly, not for your monetary gain, not for your pleasure, not for your will to be able to say, I did this for so-and-so. When you give for no reason at all, give because it's needed. That's when it counts. 
Let me ask you this question. It says, how does being kind to those in need make you feel? How does that make you feel? People in need. And I'm not talking about us in human form and in the flesh. Poor people. I'm not. There's no such thing as poor people. We have people that are down on their luck. We have people that are in need. That's the way I see it. And I don't believe in luck, but that's just the, you know, the way to say it. Okay. As for, for people to understand. Because a lot of people do believe in luck. I don't believe in luck. I believe in everybody have a season. Okay. And how does that make you feel? To be able to give to someone in need. How does it make you feel? It makes me feel alive. It fills me with so much joy and happiness. And it makes me just want to just give, 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 give. Like when I come to y'all and some days I'm in tears. I'm all in my feelings and I'm just talking to you. And this, it just it just hits me. Give. To give. I have always been a giver. And a lot of people, and I had some of my Facebook friends, um, this girl was getting her hair done the other day, and I commented on it. And I was like, your hair is always, always so nice and pretty. You always keep your hair done. And she was like, girl, who are you telling? I'm looking at you. I see you always. You posting pictures, and your hair is always nice. Your makeup is always nice. And I said, you know, I have to do for me. I don't go to the salon. I hadn't been to the salon since okay Mia is six in six years I went then because it was my baby shower and I just let her cut all my hair off and start from scratch but I have four girls and if God give me that that talent to be able to do some of the things for my girls that I would have to send them to the salon to do that's what I'm gonna do and she was like what you need to go and get your license and be in a beauty salon somewhere. I went to school for cosmetology for a while. And that's when I realized I had asthma. And all of the chemicals I couldn't do. And now I'm to the point. Yes, it's a way to make money. It is. But it's not what I want to do. That is not my calling. If at some point God continued to guide me in that, in that direction to go and do that. Then I'm, I'm going his way. But I've never wanted cosmetology to be my job. It was something that I enjoyed doing. I don't want to do it just to make money. If I'm going to do it, I want to do it to be a blessing to somebody. Always. My YouTube page, it is to be a blessing to somebody. I haven't made one dime with YouTube. I think my account might be like $4. Okay, who gonna send you some who and you got to make a certain amount of money before they even start sending you some, you know, and I was talking to a girlfriend about, you know, the AdSense and all of that. I hadn't figured that mess out yet. So I know God is my source. When he get ready to issue out some duckies on that one, I know he gonna do it. It is not my will to take from anybody we have all had some weak moments in our life we all have moments where we don't know where both of our whether our ends are gonna meet give help somebody seriously seriously and whether we realize it or not and there's no way we can really know but we have some ladies here on YouTube that come and share with us every day Come and share. They smile. They face is always nice. But you don't know what kind of hell these women might be catching. And excuse my French. You don't know what might be going on in that person's life. I had a young lady tell me the other day. Every time I see you, you, you just make me smile. Because you're always smiling. You're always so encouraging. And all of that. And I consider that as a blessing to me. Considering last Sunday I was so depressed. I could not. I couldn't encourage myself for nothing. 
I was in such a way and the devil was sitting on both shoulders telling me, you not this. You ain't going to make no money with YouTube. You not. How can you talk to these women about being encouraging and all of this stuff and you don't even have a job? You're gaining weight. You're this. You're that. You can't do no giveaways. You can't do this. You. He was riding me like a Japan. Y'all, he was riding me, okay? But... When God say joy shall come in the morning, yes, ma'am. You better ask him and you better you better receive it. Because I cried and I cried and I let it go and soon I felt release. I felt a release. I felt a sense of peace. And my tears dried up. They dried up. If I even wanted to have a pity party, I couldn't. And I began to say, Lord, thank you. No matter what. Thank you. But it's a scary feeling to be in this world and feel like you by yourself whether you got family or not. When you on a when you on a fixed income and you got kids and you can't even put shoes on your children's feet. You don't know y'all eating bologna and bread. Yes, that's something to eat. But let me tell y'all something. Not a one of us will want to have to eat that every day or even give up Goodbye. give up their surprise or give up what they're going to eat so that their children can not to take away from your children but to be able to feed your children and you not get something to eat not a one of us want to go through that trust and believe that whatever we do for people out of the kindness of our hearts it does not go unnoticed when you do it behind closed doors, that's when you get your blessing. You don't do it to boast and to showboat and to show off. Stop. Help somebody, guys. That's why I don't mind... Doing shout out videos, I don't mind at all because we all need a start somewhere. But there's a way that we do everything, guys. There's a way that you do things, guys, and I know my sisters here on YouTube. You don't want nobody coming to you and mistreating you and hurting you. Please, y'all, be mindful of the things that we say and the things that we do to people. Because let me tell you something. One thing for certain and two for sure, karma is something else, okay? <laughs> like in my Kevin Hart voice, you are something else. It is something else. But if you don't know, you're going to learn today. Keep it up. Keep it up. People go through stuff. You know, we got some unsavory people in this world. I sat back today and I watched um, something on, um, on Facebook. And they talked about these people were complaining because these children had prayer for two and a half hours. And they want to know, how do you feel about it? And it was a lot of people that was for prayer. And it was a lot of people that wasn't. How in the world could you not be for prayer? I don't care what language you pray in. Who? Uh, Teresa? Time out. Mm -hmm. I was proud of them, tell you the truth. I wouldn't care if they was in there for 20 hours. These children took it upon themselves. You don't know what God was doing. You don't know how he was working. You don't know how he was moving. He might have had those children praying for somebody that needed to be prayed for. Not that they had to be in the midst, in that circle of those people that were praying. But somebody somewhere needed that prayer. It might have been me, might have been you, might have been somebody. Somebody needed those prayers, y'all. That's for real. And we here because somebody has prayed for us at some point in our life. 
We have a hedge of protection around us. You best try to learn how to pray, I'm telling you. Because y'all, these things that's going on in the news every day, it's not a mistake. Seek and ye shall find. Seek his face. I got to learn that too. I'm still learning that. So Kiki, I am so grateful for my daily devotional. Because I need all of God's grace, all of his mercy, all of his guidance in my life. Because it's so easy. Anybody know a Taurus? It's easy to flip the script and go smooth off all the way left. Y'all calling me Hurricane TT, okay? I don't do ugliness. I don't like that. But I can be ugly, cross-eyed, bug tooth and all, however you want to say it. But you know what? That's the old me. That's the me that I try to keep hitting. That's the me that I know God would not be proud of. If I did that to his children. And we have all done that. And I still may do it. Somebody pissed me off one day. And I just feel like okay I'm sick of this. I'm just going to go on and go on with it. Because I know you know what. Lord you're going to forgive me. But I got to remember I can't keep doing it and asking you to forgive me every time I do it and knowing what I'm doing and feel like I can do it and then say, God, forgive me. But I got to mean it. And it's a choice. You're going to choose to act like a monkey or you're going to choose to do right. It is imperative. It is imperative. It is someone please call 911 situation. We got to get it right. What would Jesus do? Always keep that in your front. Always on your mind and in your heart. What would Jesus do? There's no way Jesus would disrespect anybody. There's no way that he would actually just hurt somebody on purpose. But um, what he did do, he took all of our burdens on his back. He took it by his stripes. Everything he shed, they shed. His blood was spilled upon the earth for us. To wash away all of our sins. But we got to seek him. And there's no way in the world that I would tell my children you cannot pray. And I wish a sucker would send one of mine to the office. Because they were saying their prayers. You would get. That's one of them days that TT. Hurricane TT will be in full effect. I wish a knucker would. Okay. My baby boy, three years old, we laying up here watching TV and Joel Osteen came on and he said something that evidently Corey agreed with and my baby said, what? Amen. It's so much stuff going on. So much stuff going on. So many unnecessary things going on in life. And I'm serious. I, I call... All of my sisters that that love the Lord and love themselves and and care about people to to pitch in and help out. It is it is imperative right now that we do so. So I'm going to end this. Mia, come here for a minute. Close my door for me, please. Thank you. So I just came to talk about that because I'm kind of in my feelings. I don't like people feelings getting hurt. I don't like to see people be mistreated. And I, me, I, me, you can call me naive, green, whatever you want to call me. I'm just all about helping somebody. I just want everybody to feel, to have a little bit of peace. Even just for a moment to help them because Every little bit helps. You don't know what somebody, at what stage somebody's thinking is. You know, they could be on the verge of killing themselves, hurting somebody else, all of that. And if me extending my hand or saying, baby, it's okay, Pooh, I may not have the answer. I might not have the funds in my pocket to give you to help you pay your light bill. But I'm going to pray that God send help to you. And a lot of people don't know, I have not worked in three years. <laughs> yeah. And just within the last eight months, I'm here to tell you, I went from having three cars to having one. Mm-hmm. I had a whole, I had a four-bedroom, two-full bath house, full of furniture. Everything paid for. 
And I got to the point in my life I wanted something different. And the opportunity came for us to move. And I found another four bedroom, two bath home that was a lot larger that whenever my children got ready to leave home, I would still have my home. But until they decide to leave, I want them to be comfortable. I don't want them going to Tom, Dick and Harry house to hang out just because they feel cramped and stifled. No, I want them to be proud to come home and relax, bring their friends home. I sit and talk to my kids' friends just like they mine, and I ask them questions. Some of them gay and some of them not. I ask them too, how do you feel being gay? If that's your choice, then you know how to treat a person. If you're a gay female, then you know how to treat another female. Because you know how you want to be treated. You know the ins and the outs. The do's and the don'ts. I don't condone anything. People make choices in their life and they have to live with it. They have to live with it. But I'm not out to hurt nobody. I'm not. I want my children to be happy. I definitely want my husband to be happy. Most of all, bump all of that I want God to be proud of me that when my eyes close and my light is no longer lit I want him to wrap his arms around me as his child that he created from dust and say welcome home baby girl I've been waiting on you I am so proud of you you make me smile you fill my heart with joy to know that you are my child that is what I want you know how a little child see their father and they run to him and wrap their arms around his leg? Yeah, wrap my arms around his leg and sit beside his feet and hold on tight. Because you love me like that. So why can't I love you like that? To the point where I respect you. I treat you no matter what you may look like. Everybody not going to be attractive. I know somebody look at my videos and be like, oh, pie face heifer. You can call me what you want. My name is Risa and my father's name is G-O-D. And if you got a problem with the way I look, you take it up with him, baby, because he created me. And he don't make mistakes. So all of you ladies out there that have self-esteem issues, I got them too. I got jelly rolls. I got spare tires. I got cottage cheese. I got the whole dairy uh, section all upon me. But you know what? I'm going to use it to my advantage because I got a whole lot of me that some people don't. And I got the Spirit of God resting right here. Don't be afraid of how you look. Fat, black, green, purple, whatever. Skinny. Whatever, buck to one eye, it don't matter. If putting on makeup going to make you feel better, put it on, baby girl. If putting some Dax hair grease in, in your hair and you got one piece of hair right here, if you want to finger wave that bad boy, finger wave it to the best of your ability. Hold your shoulders back and you stand up straight and you be proud of who you are. If you got to buy a wig, whatever you got to do to make you feel better about yourself, if it's losing weight, lose weight. Try your best, but don't kill yourself trying to be like somebody else. God made us all different. He made us all different for a reason. Somebody that's small, might have a big butt, nice breast, bow leg, pair of toe, beautiful skin, but they that don't mean they have the Spirit of God in them. Some people can suck. The outward appearance means more to man than what God say. He's not looking at your outward appearance. He's not. But here, being in the flesh, we are in the flesh. And once our eyes became open, we see things in a different light. But no matter the differences that we are, you still supposed to treat people with kindness and respect and love. You're supposed to lend a hand where it's needed. It's so easy to 
accept people that are going to do for you and be there for you. And you got somebody that's there that just don't like you or people that's just not as attractive as other people. It's not easy. But it's what's needed because they're human beings just like we are. There's no such thing as robots. We don't have robots. You Man can make a robot. God didn't create robots. He didn't create um, people that he did not want to be treated right. Everybody that has blood running through their veins are children of God. But some choose to live on a different side. Some choose to live by the seat of their pants, if you want to say it like that. It's a learning process. We learn as we go. Some people don't want to acknowledge it, but I acknowledge the fact that God is real. I acknowledge the fact that his son, Jesus Christ, was born and he lived and he died and he rose again just for me and you. Yes, he did. So, y'all, I'm asking y'all, be mindful of the things that you say to people. Be mindful of how you treat people. Show love, y'all. And I'm asking y'all to help out. Watch my video when I say I need your help. And it is self-explanatory. And I am as serious as serious can be. And I thank y'all for watching. I love each and every one of y'all. And, and the disclaimer is this video is not intended for any one person at all. It is not. It's just me talking about my feelings and things that I have been seeing going on on Facebook, in real life, on YouTube. Things that I have experienced. I had somebody tell me that, well, oh, it was so mean and nasty to me. But we're going to leave that in the past. But if y'all go back and watch my videos, you'll understand where I'm coming from. So once again, I thank y'all for watching. I love y'all to pieces. I send y'all love. I send y'all peace. And Blue Duchess hair grease. Bye, sugar.